Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, and for today's lesson, we're going to talk about accuracy and precision. Many times in class and in my videos, I like to say that physics is the science of measurement, meaning that um, in many fields of physics, we are going to use a lot of measuring tools. And when you're using measuring tools, you might come across some of these words that you see here. Accuracy, error, precision, range, and uncertainty. Today we're going to uh, have a look at all these terms, but we will focus especially on accuracy and precision. And we'll start now with error and uncertainty. Now let's first take a look at a definition. Now we will say that an error in a measurement is any deviation from the true value of a physical quantity. And this means a, a very simple concept that um, every quantity has a value and we try to uh, figure out that, what that value is by measuring it. But every time you do a measurement there is a degree of error and it will be very very important for us to figure out what are the possible sources of error and just to give you um, an example let's imagine I want to find my own height so I will use some measuring tools for instance a tape measure or a meter stick and I find out that uh, I measure a value which is 1.92 meters but that measurement comes with an uncertainty. We'll see what this uncertainty comes from. So, for instance, uh, in this case, uh, the uncertainty goes in the last digit. So we say that my height is 1.92 plus minus. So that gives you a range, no, above, just a little bit above, or just a little bit beyond of 0 0.01 meters, which corresponds to 1 centimeter. And as I said before, it's really, really important to, uh, and this is something you will work a lot, especially in the diploma program, to uh, identify the sources of error in your measurement. And when we want to define the error of the uncertainty in a measurement, one of the main uh, features is what we call precision. And here is our definition of precision. Precision is the degree by which repeat measurement. So that means if we are re uh, measuring the same thing over and over again, so if we repeat these measurements, these measurements are consistent, which means they are close to each other. You get maybe different numbers, but they are not so different one from the other. So this is what we mean with precision, being consistent. If you repeat the measurement, you get a number which is close to the numbers you got before. And you will see that this depends critically on you, the choice of measuring tool. So getting back to a measurement of length, for instance, you could choose to use a ruler. And for instance, the ruler we have depicted here has a precision of one millimeter. That's the smallest change you can, uh, you can measure here. You see, you have one centimeter, two centimeter, every centimeter is divided by 10, so the smallest variation you can measure is one millimeter. That's the precision of this ruler. On the other hand, if you use this strange object here, the caliper, the vernier caliper to be more precise, most of them have a precision of 0.1 millimeter. So, again, immediately you see that the, ch the choice of a measuring tool um, affects the precision of your measurement. The second cri critical factor you have to take into account is accuracy. Our definition of accuracy is how close your measurements are to the true value. And it might seem, oh, it's the same thing as before. Before, when we were talking about precision, told how close the numbers you measure are to each other doesn't mean that they're close to the true value. Okay, here on the other hand, I'm saying, okay, how close you're getting to the real value. And I want to give you an example. Now let's imagine you have a watch. Now a watch can measure time down to a second, so it's very precise. But let's imagine your clock 
is consistently ahead of one hour of a true hour okay so that means your your watch is actually is precise sorry but it's not accurate whatever reading you get you'll always be off by one hour so you're away from a true value by one hour when we want to explain the difference, and it's not easy uh, uh, the first guys to understand the difference between accuracy and precision, the most common uh, example is that of the shooting range. So let's imagine you have a target and imagine that you have some arrows. Okay, now your goal, let's say the true value is the bullseye, not the center of your target. Now let's imagine that you shoot all your arrows and they hit random places. Maybe one of them is on the bullseye, but the others are all away. Now, this is an example where your measurements are both inaccurate and imprecise. They're not close to the true value and they're not close to each other. Let's imagine we have another example, we try again, and we're getting all our arrows close together. So we're very consistent in our shooting. Unfortunately, all of our arrows are landing far away from the bullseye, from the center of the target. So this is an example of a measurement which is very precise because you are consistent, but inaccurate because you're always off away from the true value. In another example, what you get? You get that your arrows are all in, they're very spreaded, but they're spreaded around the true value. What does it mean? Your measurement is not precise because you're not consistent. Sometimes you're close, sometimes you're far away. On the other hand, you are accurate because on the whole, you're in an area which is around or close to the true value. So this is an example of high accuracy and low precision. Finally, and of course this is uh, uh, our most desirable effect, what happens, you shoot all of your arrows, all of your arrows hit the bullseye, they're all close together. So what do you have? You have uh, a measurement which is consistent, all your arrows are bundled together, so high precision. Not only they're all on the bullseye or very close to the bullseye, to the center of the target, to the true value. That means you're also very, very accurate. Whatever your measurement is very important, and this will be even more important in future years, to figure out in which of these four scenarios you are. And of course, this is the scenario where you want to end up. The last term I want to um, describe, I mean, explain to you, and this is really related to measuring tools rather than the me measurement process, is the range. And this will be a critical factor when you get to choose what is the uh, most appropriate tool in, uh, um, in a measurement. And the range, and let's look at our definition here, is the interval between the smallest measurable values. So every time you pick a measuring tool, uh, you have to look, okay, what is the smallest quantity I can measure? Many times it will be zero, but it will not always be the case. And what is the biggest one? And usually that is the end of whatever scale you have on your tool. But let's look at an example. Again, a very simple example. Let's get again our small ruler. And if you look, what is the smallest value? Here at the beginning of a scale is zero. So the smallest value is zero millimeters. The biggest one is 15 millimeters, the end of a scale. So um, pretty obvious, the range of this ruler is zero figures. And what is important to uh, understand what is the range of a, a measuring tool? Because you have to compare every time you pick 
uh, your tool, you have to compare it to the quantity, to the object you have to measure. So, for instance, this ruler, which is, by the way, very precise, uh, it's appropriate you have something which is smaller or, at maximum, as big as 15 millimeters. If you have something bigger, it's impractical to use this ruler. You have to pick an object which has a bigger range. Um, we'll see this more in detail in class. So, that's all for today. Goodbye from Mr. Buscarini.